Sunday, Sunday. <laughs> hey, I think we need to pop on that light. We talked about that the other day. Yeah. yeah. Ugh. Welcome to the octagon. Yeah, somehow Abe has all the problems okay, with the lighting. I think you can already... We're live. So we're live? Yay. Hey, we're live. Hey. Oh, where hey, we're this is not. Oh, there it goes. There, no hey, we're back. excited. This is going to be really fun. We're now live streaming. Hi, first of all, I'm Aiden <laughs> Deeming. First and time. welcome to the Kinetic Experience. This is the first time for us that we're live streaming both to Twitch, or three, three places, right? Twitch, YouTube, and Facebook on Danica's personal profile this Hi, time. Guys. Oh, sorry if you were just looking to, to see Danica. You get to deal with the rest of us now. Yeah, that's fun. So I'm Aiden Deeming. I'm Danica Morton. Emily Francis. Steven Ellis. And welcome to the Octagon. The Octagon? No. no. <laughs> Sorry. Can we all just agree it's to just not say that again because it's lame? It's totally lame. What else should we say? The Thunderdome. The, the Thunderdome. Thunder welcome to the Thunderdome. <laughs> Duh. Madness. So, this is, derp, derp. So, this, like I said, this is the first time. So, we're going to be monitoring chat in a few different places. And uh, today, our topic is purpose. So what we've been doing is there going is around no our purpose. wealth wheel. Not porpoise. No purpose. This is not a show about porpoises. Purpose. Purpose. Porpoise. So this is a fun porpoise. one. So this is actually the first thing on our, our kinetic wealth wheel. Yes. So and is it the most important since it's the first? Not necessarily. No. It's a wheel. But uh, it, it shows up first, but we're doing it yeah. here in like, I don't know, try number eight or nine. I say try because we're still figuring this out. <laughs> we will be for many years. Yeah. So Danica <laughs> will take us take it away with purpose. What so, is the wealth wheel, anyways? Well, yeah, we need to start with that. The wealth wheel. We call it the wealth wheel because we totally bought into what the definition is of wealth, which is an abundance of energy, resources, money. What was the rest? Some other stuff. Property, possessions, some whole bunch of stuff. Things and stuff. No, yeah. It's wealth is an abundance of possessions, money, and resources. Yeah. Okay. I like to add energy <laughs> and time. Resources. Okay. So that is what wealth means to us. And so we created this wealth wheel that highlights 10 key resources. Um, and then we broke those down into two resources each. So really we focus on 20 resources that we believe give you an optimal, can give you an optimal life, um, depending on where you put your intention and priority. Mm -hmm. So today we are discussing purpose, which we broke down into impact, like what type of impact are you making in the world, and then goals. So um, you, we'd love to know that your goals align with your impact, because otherwise it's you're like going in circles and it doesn't make any sense. So we really want to see as people go through the wealth world that everything does align and make sense so that they can build that life and they can really see, hey, I, I want to be able to go climb Kilimanjaro, but I'm not exercising daily, weekly, monthly. So there's no way that that your body lines up with your goals. So it's really to, to look at things like that, to be able to make sure it all works together. I think one of the one a person that I know that's full of purpose is actually that 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 one right there. What? No. Emmy? Emmy? This one? No. E train. I like M Dizzle. M Dizzle. Oh. <laughs> Lots of purpose in that little kid over there. What you? What, what are the things that drive you? Um, knowing that when I uh, finally kicked this can all the way down the road, I've helped people in my life. So. Yeah. Like she's active. Mm -hmm. Like she'll leave this beautiful establishment and then go and run booths and go to meetings and like legit give. Give literally my body fluids to save lives. <laughs> but but what is she? You didn't even define what your purpose is. Like what what are you going to give your time and run booths for? Like what is that? Um, so I'm the vice passion. president of a charity called Friends with Benefits in Denton, and our goal and mission and what we do is we help fundraise and collect money and supplies, etc., whatever they may be, for other nonprofit organizations in and around North Texas. So. The little small groups doing great work, but that they don't have a budget for marketing. They don't have a budget to advertise to make themselves known. We put on big ass events or small events or whatever kind of event, and then donate any all the proceeds to beneficiaries. So awesome! I love it. Plus, our name is badass. So <laughs> shout out to Mindy and Karen Charlie. 
Did they, were you there when that name was dropped? No, they, I, they started it in 2013. I think I started volunteering in like 2015. And then like really volunteering in 2015. I love when and by 2016 she me. took it over. Pretty yep. much. I was. And she started like, volunteering like December 28th of 2015. Yeah. <laughs> That's exactly January how Emily 4th, works. January 4th, January 2016 is Listen, mine now. First of all, uh, I mean, they, they did create a board position for me because all the existing ones were taken. So. <laughs> <laughs> That is actually director of awesome. That's the highlight of truly like highly effective people is that usually they walk into an, an organization and regardless of what the organization is, if the organization gets out of their way, they will improve it a hundredfold. Yes. Or they'll leave and burn it to the ground. And fun fact, it, they now have two directors of co-directors of awesome because you know my tiny little feet, those shoes were too big to fill. So. <laughs> and she's so humble. And we have two awesome. Doing that now, who did way more than I did as that in that position. That's, That's cool. cool. Very excited. So, awesome. this gentleman, what is your purpose that you'll be able to divulge to the public? Do you have a purpose that you can? <laughs> He's like, uh, I, I want to point secret. out. Hold on, hold on. I want to point out the <laughs> fact that Stephen was fully available during our live yesterday, from the beginning mm -hmm. to the end, but he purposely didn't show up because we were our topic was vulnerability. So I'm gonna go ahead and tell everybody. Uh. Ah, so <laughs> we're gonna bring it up again at some point in the future when you least expect it, so and Abe's we're purpose, all going to. Abe's purpose is spinning the story. Mm. I was not available. There was a conversation that was happening mm -hmm. around the methods that IBM uses for their new food trust, their food traceability system, and that call ran really long. Mm -hmm. So while I was sitting there listening to people learn for the first time some of the core technologies, I was also on the chat talking to everyone live. Because it was much more interesting. Okay, so purpose. Would you? Is there anything you would like to share there? I mean, honestly, I haven't really thought about the broad sense of, like, purpose, right? Like, I've thought about, like, tactically, like, what's the intent or purpose for something, like, in the moment or, like, in the short span, but, like, I don't particularly know my own purpose. <clears throat> If that makes sense. Okay. Ooh, I lied. Yeah, like I know the things that I can do. I'm kind of shocked by that actually. No, it so, has nothing to do with purpose. You're so tactical and and yeah. and, and deep and uh, strategize. I mean, like I have. Goals, so why are you right? strategizing? What? Well, okay, so so what are your goals aligning to, or working toward? Because you're not a money only guy. No. No, you're not. Because well, I mean. I guess if you're you would, an investor, if you would stack it as a foundation, there's the like knowledge is the base for everything. Knowledge, when applied correctly, turns into power and influence. And those two things then develop into financial wealth. Right. So building that system is pretty much, I guess, that would be my purpose is building that system. But the power. I mean, yeah. That leads to financial wealth. <laughs> but, but it's like, it's, it's interesting because like this actually dovetails perfectly with like, um, there's, there's a game that me and uh, Coley, my roommate, play, which is called Factorio. And the whole goal of the game is to build a factory. But then at some point, the goal of the game turns from building the factory into continuing the expansion of the factory. So mm. the purpose of the game is to continue playing the game. Right. Oh, I love that. And I would say that pretty much perfectly encapsulates what I do. Like, there may not be a specific, like, I need to save the world, but the purpose of the, my purpose is to continue playing the game to enact a purpose. Yeah, oh, saying? my gosh. So yet, you, when I was doing the human design class the other day, we talked about these certain gates that you have around. I don't remember which center. I'll have to think of it. But one of them was called the the gate of, of the game of life or playing the game of life or something. And you were the only one in all the people I have a chart on that has that gate. And it described it just the way you did. So I have to find it and send it to you. I mean, that is, that is essentially, like, that really does describe how everything works. Like, life is a chessboard. Huh? And there is nothing beyond playing the game, essentially. Like, you can, you can believe that there's other things beyond the board. But you can't really prove that there's other things beyond the board. So really, we're running around the board to try to get to a place where we can define what is on the other side. Okay, you got super deep, super fast. Yeah. And I love that. 
but in living your life, you have aligned in a certain, you, you do things. Like you're doing blockchain, you're really big yeah. in blockchain right now. Right. Not cryptocurrency necessarily as much as blockchain, right? Right. right. So some people look at a blockchain and they wake up and go to bed thinking about blockchain as the way to um, increase food safety or yeah. Yeah. to uh, provide tools for developing countries. I don't know, right? right? You probably right. know some more of those than I do. I, do you have any of those or why why blockchain versus some other thing? Because blockchain has captured enough of the attention <coughs> from corporate all the way down to obvious technologies. And it is a core fundamental technology that will be just as important as your email or sure. TCP IP routing. So understanding that core knowledge of how that system operates then puts you on a different level to be able to have control over those systems as they're developed, which is now what's happening. Like we're being paid to develop these systems for people because you know, way back in 2011, we started amassing the knowledge to be able to understand these at a fundamental level. So it's less about the technology and more about the new, the new expansion of knowledge that that technology represents. Hmm. So would your purpose be around the facilitation of this expansion of new technologies? As long as they're adding to a fun, uh, useful knowledge base, yes. Uh, I feel like your purpose is nerd hard and go home. I mean, that's a, that's a good <laughs> And play oh like my god, that's funny. Except he nerd hard at home, so I don't know. I think it's nerd hard at home and then go out and... Just nerd hard and be home. Me. Oh, yes. Nerd <laughs> hard and be home. That that's definitely... Nice. <laughs> You're welcome. Oh my god, that's awesome. No, that, that could totally be... That's why we're driving, we're, we're driving toward a more ready player one type scenario of the world where, <laughs> yeah, a lot of stuff will become fragmented and granular, but at the same time massively interconnected. But... You know, the people that bemoan, like, oh, my God, everyone's on their phone. And they're like, they're not looking up at the sky. Yeah, they are when they choose to. They're just not doing it constantly. I just started having right. anxiety thinking about, like, if I was living in the world that Ready Player One is happening, just, like, I get, like, physically anxious thinking about being that far deep in essentially my own head. Um, since this is the first time we're pushing to multiple channels, I just want to check something. On yours, mm -hmm. is there a setting that your your the video is uh, for friends only, or is it public? Can you check? Uh, let me check. Because I shared it to mine. Oh, and then... someone. Yeah, normally everything I have is public, no. but now it was changed. I just changed it to public. It was just friends only. Uh, friends of friends. Okay. All right. Cool. So we're we're gonna see how that works. Because um, I had a friend reach out and said. You know, send me a screenshot of what my screen looks like to them, or my, my post. Cool. Okay, tell them just to refresh the, the browser and show Yeah. <coughs> so, I have not seen Ready Player One, but the whole, what I have heard terrifies me, so I what? really don't want to see what it. What terrifies you? Yeah, yeah. Oh, no, 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 I don't like any futuristic movies. There's a couple reasons. One, it's dark everywhere. I can't stand dark. Everything's metal. This one was definitely better than that. It wasn't okay. dark and dystopian. It was just dystopian. dystopian. <laughs> See, I, I just it was just that the economy had to the economy had got to a really bad state in the Basically, United it's here States, in 20 years. which is like basically most of Middle America right now. Okay. Yeah. And people were able, and at the same time, there was an explosion of uh, virtual reality. Headsets and equipment and the game and people were able to escape from the lack of having cool jobs and whatever into okay. that world. But yeah, none of that to me. Well, I think you should watch it because that's the world. It that's, did a that lot is of legitimately fun, like, the way the world's going. And like pop culture <laughs> stuff from like the eighties and you know nineties ish. Yeah. So that was actually kind of fun. Okay. I missed a lot of them because <coughs> I basically was born in a bubble that didn't come to America kind of until I was oh, that's so like, true. I mean, almost ten. The good thing about that is the movie only had half the references the book did. Yeah, that's true. Um, I'm because, so should I read the book or watch the movie? You should you should watch the movie and then read the book. It was really well done. Because, Visually because they do spectacular. Diverge. Okay. They, they diverge slightly story wise. Um, okay. But the the biggest the biggest reason honestly that I would say watching sci-fi futuristic stuff is helpful is because they're big massive thought experiments into oh, for what sure. if. For so sure. then you're not yes. startled when like the aliens take over. You're like, well I saw it. That's so fine. Avengers is really gonna happen is what you're telling me basically. I mean yeah. depending on if someone finds that as their purpose, yeah. <laughs> and actually that that's what I was gonna go to. Like sci-fi really actually at the core of most sci-fi stories is asking what is the purpose of X. Right. right? 
So you get some that are like, well, you know, what is the purpose of conservation, right? Like, should we actually only care about the earth and the ecosystem and not at the expense of everything else? Mm -hmm. Or should we go completely the opposite direction and not care at all and what might possibly be the ramifications? Well, yeah. Why so, does it have to be so extreme all the time? Because if you think in the extremes and you can... It's really right interesting that the rebel in the room is always like, but why aren't things so extreme? But that's my point. Why does everything have to be black and white? It's not always black and white. It's not extreme. It's, There's so many different I think stories. basically everything's gray. Yeah. And just different shades. Yeah. Yeah. I'm all good with that. stories are all different. I rebel against people saying this is the absolute. That is what a rebel against. Well, because then I'm like, daytime no, right now. they're doing their stuff. Gravity is It's daytime right here. here. It's exactly. not daytime and that's, somewhere else. And that could not be, that might not be true. Because if we're like, really are this holographic whatever, and it's really the something else, it could be something else. And we just think it's daytime. If oh, I've been Ready Lord, Player One in my whole life, I'm gonna be so pissed. Okay. <laughs> anyway, anyway, let's go back here to purpose. Yeah, so, <laughs> so, we're, so we're, you've gone in a few different. You brought us some really, really good different perspectives or points as we think right. through purpose. So, did we summarize? Did you get to my besides point. nerding hard and going or at home? No, no, no. I mean that would be the main purpose. Nerd hard, be home. Yeah. Cool. But I, you also like sharing your knowledge in a sense, or you like working with other people. Too, so right? it's not just knowledge acquisition for the sake of it. So think about that as a team sport. I like playing the game with people that are also playing the game. Uh huh. Okay. Cool. Because the people that are not playing the game, then like most of the time we don't have anything to connect over. Right. So, like when people, if someone defines their existence as, I want to be secure and safe and spend time with my family, that is a completely different game. Than the game that I want to play, which even is even though my game has elements of those. No, no, no I, I get it. Yeah, I, I love it. But the game that I want to play is like, okay, what is the? How can we refine this? Right? Like, what is what is the improvement that can be made inside of the cycle of activities that I'm doing? That's called life. Mm -hmm. Right. So if I'm not making an improvement in that, then like, what am I actually doing? So that's like, like for me, doing doing family activities is fun. But I also want to see, like, okay, is there a way that we can improve the family activities to get more of what everyone else wants out of it? Because otherwise, if we do the same cookout every single weekend for, like, the next 50 years, I'm going to uh, die. Just shoot me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I get it. I'm just thinking, like, I feel like the traits in which you're describing are just, are, are supportive of a, of, a, of a purpose that, like you said earlier, like, I've never really put them into words. Do you, you know what I'm saying? Like, what he's describing is the traits of how he's living his life, which I totally get, but mm -hmm. I totally support, actually, 100%. Um, and align with, I don't want to say the word support, I like, I align with those, right. but um, like still the purpose is not just the action of those or refinement of those, it's towards something. Yeah, it's all, all everything being driven towards something. And that's something not necessarily being rigidly defined. Sure. Hmm, well it's like my purpose is to help people, I know have a specific goal. I would like to make sure everyone has clean drinking water and everything I do is working towards that. I think that's one of the things I like about Friends is that I've had the opportunity to work with a lot of different kinds of organizations. So, so I haven't had is, to like- That is your purpose probably. See, yeah. My purpose is the empowerment of organizations that- probably, Are doing good work. They do and good I, work. I don't have to commit and basically, oh, well I, I can either volunteer my time with an animal shelter and do great work there but then I might, and then I can't work with kids, or I can't work with homeless outreach, yeah. and then I can't do this, and then it's like, oh, I'm like, I get to do it all. I can have it all. See, oh, anti-niching. No, that's yeah. no, it's wonderful. But yeah. I think you're, yeah. Oh, I mean, I'm not saying what your purpose is, suggesting a, a type or or, or and look version my other of it. charity here. <laughs> I did not want to say that. She literally named us that. <laughs> Anyways, uh, yeah, your 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 purpose is really the empowerment of people that are helping other people. And, and, and supercharging their efforts. And yeah. I, I mean, that's, that's super awesome. I love that. And that may change in the future, and you're like, I really want to just focus in this particular thing, but it's probably what you're saying. It's probably go back, and it's probably been doing that for a long time. Yeah. A lot of hot messes. Not okay. looking at me. <laughs> My face was just pointed that way. <laughs> My eyeballs were just pointing at you. So, here, so one of the recent, actually, can you give me one of those books from behind you? Steve? Yeah, yes, on the, the stand. In the stands. Oh. So one of the one of the recent purpose, like really big purpose projects we have is we've been working on it was with Tangi, which is her Repeat After Me Kids series, and this whole thing 
is started off as, so there's another book there, which we don't need to go grab, but it's called Repeat After Me, You Matter. And TMG had this idea to create a book that would help kids build their own positive, uh, or learn how to create positive uh, self, self esteem and confidence from themselves and done here by, by the power of affirmation. So here is an example of kind of, you know, some of the, some of the imagery, some of the, that's inside of this book. Yancy, if you're still watching, I think you'd love this. We actually have a, a she has this book also written for Christian kids. This, this yellow one is just, you know, a generic book and for, for any kid. And the one you matter is specifically designed for kids that have been through something traumatic. And she said, you know, I want to, I want to donate this book and I want to get this book out there. And that was her purpose is, was creating this kind of change in children or encouraging and, and being part of it and facilitating it. However, she didn't think about having a business around it. And it was, well, you know, you know, Tandy, if you create a profitable company, then that company can reach out to other organizations and partner and get these books out. So right now she has a goal of getting 7,000 of the You Matter books um, delivered and donated in 2019 or more. And uh, now all of a sudden everything in our house and so much is, is aligned with this particular book and her purpose, including at seven in the morning, I was slapped awake by Noah and he had his book with him oh. and he laid beside me. I'm going to post this picture on Instagram and you're going to see nothing but like maybe a little bit of yellow in the photo because that's how dark my room was when he is laying beside me and with his book reading the book and I was like pulling the book to my face to see if I could remember the words that were there and Aww, so yeah so cute. so that's amazing and Nisa yeah. runs around the house saying my thoughts are powerful my thoughts are powerful yeah. like it's a song so this whole freaking business this oh. whole effort is driven on her purpose if you empower kids and they get real <laughs> hard to manage <laughs> Yeah. yeah. Hey, I'm not saying I'm for it. Full of ideas and stuff. <laughs> I mean, that is my purpose right there, you guys. <sighs> Which one? Uh, empower kids. Yes. And so, you have, of course, that aligned with Janica's purpose. You, you empower them, and I will suck all the youth and vitality out of them. So it's a win win symbiotic yeah. relationship. You just, just got to watch and, and see where they're, they're moving toward when they become empowered. So, like, what do, you, what do you say? He wants to know if he can recruit the best ones. Yeah. No, no, no. I was going to say, like, you have to watch <laughs> out. Conquest. Because sometimes, like, certain ideas will form and be acted on, and they may not be in the best interest of the kid. So, my the example from my childhood, uh, I think I was six. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I was like five or six. And so, I had oh, learned about uh, pulleys and how pulleys work. Okay? Oh. And so, I was like, oh, that's really cool. You can create, you know, a system of pulleys and you can move stuff. So I took a bunch of uh, chain link, <laughs> or yeah, a bunch of chains, and I put a bunch of buckets in this tree in front of her house. And I was moving the buckets up and down with my pulley system. And then I noticed that the bucket, the, the, the chains were rubbing oh. the branches and cutting into the branches. And I was like, oh, this is cool. Force hmm. application. So I put a bunch of rocks in the bucket, and I spent like two weeks just... Oh, and, no one, and everyone was like, oh, Steve's out there playing with the tree. And then they were like, what are you doing? I was like, I'm going to cut down the tree. And they were like, ha that's funny. Until the third week. And then like, <laughs> it fell down. There was this very wide, shallow divot in this branch. And then my grandmother was like, you need to stop that because you're actually making progress. Because everyone, you know, like most people are like, yeah. after three or four days, like this kid's just going to give up and stop. I was like, no. Like it was like literally I'd eat breakfast. I'd get my chores done, I'd go out there, and I'd be working on the You had a purpose. The entire time. So you did have, yeah, exactly. <laughs> so that's, that is the trick. Having a purpose, look at what it does. finding the solution and then see what happens. It's all about that curiosity. Good job, dude. Maybe but some I, of but these. But I was very empowered. Like, it was just like. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Empowered. Yeah. Empowered is awesome. You're very supportive. Like, oh, look, we can keep an eye on him. He's not doing anything wrong. Oh, no, no. I think tree, everyone was, well, wasn't paying attention. Yeah. <laughs> well, for us, I would say is the kinetic experience are off just to get back on purpose topic. Well, yeah. That was purpose. No, no. Actually, Abe hasn't said his purpose yet. He dodged it yesterday, too. Yeah, yeah okay. Well, he does. He does. today. We got, we got we got off the thing yesterday. Like, you need to say what your vote what your vote about. Yeah, like, cause I, you wouldn't shut up. I noticed, y'all talked the whole time. I noticed time. that you started with Janet. Welcome to how we feel. Now, uh, <laughs> he, he, Abe likes to direct things. All right, so Abe's purpose. Puppet master, you guys. Another shit. Good luck with that. <laughs> 
Seriously. <laughs> no, I, I, my purpose is actually the kinetic experience purpose, which is to empower risk takers with the resources, the tools, the community, the encouragement for them to achieve but that, greatness. But that is a business purpose. So, so my purpose to to expand on that. You're saying that currently the kinetic experience is a vehicle for doing that. But if the right. kinetic experience wasn't there, you would be doing that as a one man show. Yes. Okay. Yes. And so for me, then there's a lot of the what what you brought up earlier. In your, in your way of, of playing the game and, and working to improve, that's all built into that for me because I figure the more I learn, the more I'm uh, able to apply, the more resources that I can bring and understanding to when someone has an issue that I can immediately provide all of that information to them. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. So almost like a mercenary. Like mercenary's job is to go learn how to like handle weapons and fight and everything and that one day they get a call like, hey, we need to go to do this. <laughs> so I like, I like that and I you know, can develop myself and it's, it's for those people. And it's really around people that are wanting to take a risk and do something interesting and exciting. So it's not just plain business. And right. so a story is that we were in a car um, in Vegas going to go to a restaurant and guy found out like we do consulting businesses and, and small businesses or startups or whatever. And he starts telling me about this idea he has for opening a, a donut shop no, it was like a hot dog stand, hot dog shop, I'm sorry. Okay. Hot dog, burgers, sodas. And beside it, I'm gonna be, I'm gonna put a coffee shop and, and donuts. But we're talking about the bare bones basics. What he had done is he had calculated how much money he could make and he figured like, doo -doo -doo -doo, boom, 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 I'm making like 15,000 a month between these two locations. It's kind of close to the school, so the kids would come during lunch or after school. But there was nothing innovative. There was nothing exciting. There was no risk. It was just, yes, that's exactly what you'll do. You'll have one business or two shops that collectively make you 10, 15,000 a month and you'll have a comfortable life. That was the most boring conversation that I have had in a long, long time. Versus, I wanna have a hot dog shop. And in my hot dog shop, we're gonna have um, where people can make, stuff their own hot dogs and, and, then, and then we'll bake it for them or no, I don't know, where it's something like unique and different. They're gonna try, they're gonna experiment, they're gonna do something that's beyond the normal for them. And really, the fact that, especially if they're tying their own purpose to it. So it's not so, just a money maker, but it's like, I really wanna do this. Like, I get super excited talking about Emily's stuff um, or, or at least vicariously living through her because she's causing an impact. She's doing something that's different. It's always different in her case. And I think that's really exciting versus I'm gonna open a donut shop. And that voodoo donuts, plain old normal donuts. Like, oh God, that's so boring, why? Cause someone needs to open a freaking tacos and donuts like they have down in Austin because I just want a breakfast taco and a donut. <laughs> <sighs> and not like by my house where there's a taco shop immediately so, next door. So but I have topics that I'm really hyper interested in and so forth, yes. So, so that's interesting because one of the things you brought up was like, the, like that business being boring, right? So then where is the, and this is like not specifically just like for you, but then like just in the general con concept of where is the line between um, what is boring and not aligned with your purpose for you, but what mm -hmm. is totally adequate for the other person? What? <laughs> <laughs> So this is where Abe can't handle it. <coughs> no, I don't not, see it. Does not fit with no, me. No, I mean it's not. not it's, an it's not that. See, again, I'm not saying it's bad or it's good. It no, just no, doesn't no. align with me. That's what I'm saying. So like, where like where are those boundaries? So I would say, for example, he comes in and wants to work with us, and let's just stay focused on donuts. Yeah, yeah. It's like, yeah. okay, donuts awesome. So what answer. makes your donuts different and unique rather than what they sell on the shelf here at Seven mm Eleven? -hmm. Nothing. Okay, why? Don't, Don't you have some that. idea? This dude was actually from I want to say India or the subcontinent. Okay. Like, have you ever thought of maybe bringing in some of the flavors that are, are from that part of the world? So you have like pistachios on top or you infuse saffron into the mix. Um, no, I have not, but that's a great idea. I don't know where to get started. Awesome, would you like to work on that? That would be really awesome because he's trying something unique and different. Now he's like, nope, boring. I want to stay boring. I'm scared. I don't want to risk it. I don't want to lose anything. But I mean. Then that's cool for him, but I don't have a lot to serve him with. Okay, that's so you're saying like, my tool, my you, bags of tricks are good for. People. It's fitting to the specific type of like, okay, this is a more, this is this is taking a different twist on things. So like, I'm more comfortable slash studying the things that happen. But it's also then becomes innovative. There's a use of imagination. There's use of creativity. Um, there's self-directed learning. Like really, all the traits that we use to describe 
uh, Leonardo da Vinci and becoming da Vinci get applied into that particular new business model, right? I don't know if anybody's ever mixed saffron into the flour of donuts before. So how does that work? Saffron is usually used in a liquid format. How do you, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they're like, man, we gotta figure this stuff out and then we can try something unique and it's gonna fail and we're gonna, oh, whatever. That's super exciting to me and that's where I can bring my skill sets in. So does that mean that in a lot of cases it is necessary to develop the level of support necessary to be able to take those risks? 100%. Mm. Yes. And some people want to develop them. I talked to I talked to a guy two days ago. Uh, he has a martial arts studio in Fort Worth. Okay. He he kind of he says I kind of red line when I get to about two hundred people every every year. Yeah. Uh, or whenever my program gets about two hundred people, I kind of red line and can't ever really break that threshold. Well, yeah, because there's only so much time you can personally devote to. Because right now he's everything. Yeah. In yeah. that particular business. And so we described so many different elements. He's like, well, ultimately the business is a, is a mirror of yourself. And it's, it's, he's like, yes. And this dude was just tracking 100%. You know, I was like, I believe that you are your own worst, being, being your own boss while you are the only employee or one of the main key employees is horrible because you will be the worst, you'll be the best employee and the worst boss to yourself possible. Yeah, it's your like, boss oh my is God. always an asshole. Right. I'm like, for sure. Why would you give me on the weekend? It's like, oh. Yeah, because he was like, I yeah. spent all day long being a janitor in my location, and I'm tired of it, right? Mm -hmm. So we talked through what that would look like and why it would be different, and he talked about potentially, you know, leaving the day-to-day because -day he's like, dude, I love what I do, <clears throat> but I don't want to do this forever. It's not like I wake up in the morning and want to go to bed thinking of Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu every night. Like, I love it, and I really liked it a lot more until it became the thing I have to do. Okay, right, right. so in that conversation, it was around, are you willing to uh, <coughs> go through this process and this transformational process to understand really what is it that you're wanting to achieve in your life? You know, defining what that is, knowing what's, what, what, what fears you have and being able to, you know, we tackle those, uh, not necessarily just jumping out of the plane, but like step by step, going through the process, really uncovering those creating a vision so that you can bring in team members, bring in people, bring in customers that are going to rally around that vision of what you're looking to create, the culture that you have in your gym, so that you can ultimately grow past just you being the guy on the mat. He's like, fuck yes, right? Yeah. So my skill set or the things that I've been learning in my life is around, especially in people that are in transition. I feel like I'm always in transition. I feel like whenever I get to an area that I'm like, I, I know how this works, I'm gonna go, point direction into, I'm going to point myself into a new direction and go figure out how something else works. So I'm never in a position where I'm like, I know everything all the time and I'm not a master or an expert in any one particular topic. I just know everything about everything. <laughs> okay, but is there a point where, are you driving toward a point where you will have expertise maybe in this specific lane? The, like the lane of risk taking and certification? Possibly what I think I've been able to, to say in general is that I've started to have expertise or want to have expertise in strategy. Okay. Especially um, generic strategy, just the topic of strategy, but really human, intera human dynamics, human interactions, uh, understanding psychology at that level and understanding influence at that level. Hmm. So that's something I'm really, really, really passionate about and really interested in, uh, for sure. I really love the idea of trying to think through how somebody can do what they want to do as soon as possible. And trying to encaps encapsulate that into, um, and distill it down to what are the experiences that they're wanting to uh, have, right? That they don't have to wait for some future element to happen. So, so I, I said yeah. it a different way. I, I used to say the same thing until I was challenged to it and then I, I, I saw the wisdom there, which is, I want to be a billionaire. Okay, why? Why do you want to be a billionaire? And some people just can't answer the question. Neither could I. It just sounds good. But what do you want to accomplish or what do you want to have when you're a billionaire? So you write it out and it's like, well, do you want that or do you want to experience that? So oh, as an example, yeah, yeah. I, I used to say I want, to, I want a private jet. But when I really think about it, I don't want a private jet. I want to have the experience of being able to fly private on, on a private plane when I want to. <coughs> Two totally different things. 
I don't want to own a jet. I don't want some dude call me right now and say, hey man, the wing's got, you know, it has some hell damage. Do you want to do it? And I don't, I don't want to deal with that. No interest in my part, yeah. right? I just want to be able to get on a jet. So then you look at it <coughs> and the amount of money needed to be able to fly on a private plane whenever I want to versus buying a jet, maintaining, maintaining it and insurance and having the pilot ready to go, <coughs> completely different thing, right? Yeah. So that's my thing is like, okay, well, we can accomplish some of these things um, without you having to wait on some future event way, 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 way down in the future. Uh, we had a good question on uh, Twitch. So if, if Whoa, it's... wait, we have Warren Kyle here. <laughs> this is an honor. I want everybody to know. Don't tell them about the, never mind, or shrine. Go ahead. Sorry. <coughs> What's up, Big Daddy? Face of ADD, people. Yes. Um, what if you believe you have purpose, but you are experiencing decision paralysis? Well, that is exactly what I was referring to, transition. Someone that's in transition, so they have a purpose and they don't know what to do, which is something that I've spent so many, so much of my life in that paralysis, paralysis? being paralyzed Paral yeah. by indecision or not knowing how to move forward. And what <laughs> we realized, and this is really like our whole kinetic core program, yep. is what happens is that when you're in a transitional moment like that, there's two things that, that, that come to play. And it could be all one or all the other or both, which is fear or not knowing what to do. And sometimes they're both, like I don't know what to do. And then when you learn what to do, because the fear element, you can't actually do them. And so that's something that we've been really passionate about. So for us, I would say it, it, what we end up uncovering in our kinetic core program, it's, it's around understanding where the fears are, being aligning with that truth, and then, then being able to create a new paradigm or a new process to move forward. And the other one is just having a strategy for actually implementing <coughs> decisions. And some of those, uh, you can get help on. So maybe, maybe the idea is, um, going back to this example we've been using, is I want to open a donut shop. You're really sure what donut shop is. You know how to do all these things, but then you really don't know how to run an oven. Well, you can get a consultant. You can reach out to somebody and say, you know, can you teach me this particular thing? But I know I need it because it's part of my overall strategy and it's part of my implementation plan. Mm -hmm. And that's really, that's really what it is. And having a really great community of people around you, because a lot of people that are in transition, they have a lot of negative voices that'll, that, that'll like, oh, you can't do that. Are you sure you want to do that? That's really risky. And they will wear you down. <clears throat> and so that's why one of our wealth will topics is support. And what kind of support are you having around you so you can... Uh, live out your purpose and, and do the things that you're wanting to do. So I hope that that helps you out there and answers that question. What do you want to add to that? Uh, or what would you add to that? I would, I don't know. I would say if you're dealing with any type of decision paralysis, it really has to come down to how do you really make authentic decisions? And, and most of the time when people get into decision paralysis, it's all mental. And so anything where you're going through pros and cons, and when you're really thinking through and you start think circular uh, thinking, you're not making decisions, you're just causing problems. And so it's when you have to step away from that and really get at a gut level or an emotional level to figure out what you really, really want. And a lot of times that decision paralysis is from fear. So, yeah, and that's yeah. where our equation comes in. There's, there's really only, I mean, like you can break down most decisions into like a list of one or two, yes, this will, this, I should do this, or no, mm -hmm. I should not do this. And then you check those off. And if you come up with the yeses, you move forward. If you come up with the noes, you don't move forward. And it's most of the time that simple. And everyone seems to like find some way of overcomplicating Com that. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, you just join someone and like give her a little shout out. There you go. We were talking, you were talking about our book Hi, here. Hi, book. Anyways. Oh, yeah. Sorry. So I, I think that, uh, one, a lot of people don't know their purpose. So that's a beginning stamp, like Steven said. They know what they're good at, they know what they like to do, but they don't necessarily have an overarching purpose. I would say mm -hmm. unpacking what I'm supposed to do, what I'm mm -hmm. supposed to want versus... And that's huge. What I really want. Because yeah. if it's really what you want, those decisions and those actions, you, you're, you're not even thinking it. about doing it. You're just yep. you're going about your day, and you realize you've been driving towards something. Well, yeah, I'm when you're working on someone else's purpose, that's when it's like, 
oh, I don't know what to do, I don't know what to do, I don't know what to do. Because like, you don't fucking care about it. That's well, why. And a lot of that starts from when we see our kids, and it's done to us, and it's been done for generations. Oh, he's so good at putting things together. I bet he's going to be an engineer or a builder or an architect. And then, like, oh, he's so fascinated with medicine and the body. You put one band on one teddy bear one time, yes. and suddenly your ass is in med school. Yeah, like, and no kidding, that happens what? over and I just over like and over again. Aids. But you convince yourself through your parents and through the through the that <laughs> those place. accolades that you get that oh, my purpose is to be X Y Z. And then you wake up one day and you're 40 or 50, and you're like, what the fuck just happened? Yeah, see, that wasn't me. No, thankfully, right? <laughs> a lot of people were like, you should do this. And I was like, mm, I don't know if I want to do that. <laughs> I love that about you. But a lot of people aren't like that. Yeah, I, I was very, I mean, I was very much. Not, Empowered. <laughs> rebellious wouldn't be the right word, but I wanted to know why. Yeah. And then I had an internal clock of like, why would this make sense to me? If this person tells me something that makes sense to me, then I will listen. Otherwise, eh. And mostly it's because of the fact that like I was going to check my internal why versus what I could study about it, and then if that if that also matched, yeah. and like I started doing that from a really early age, like seven and eight. So every single one of my teachers pegged me as you have a problem with authority. I was like, no, it's just that your authority needs to be verified. <laughs> Maybe just, you're no, just I, stupid I, like, authority. I, I need to know if you actually have authority. Exactly. Yes. Exactly. I, I mean, there is a reason to respect to you. you. Yeah, there's there's a different word that we. What is it like? So what are your authority on the subject versus you have a position. But even well, like, even well, in people like, having positions, I would want to I, verify. I, I, I yeah. know that, but I, the, I know, yeah. But on no, the principle, that's, like that's cool. But do you actually know what you're doing? Is where you, I know you would be coming from. Totally. So do you have the actual ingredients to say you have authority? Because I was the curious kid that said, "Oh, you're the principal. What does that mean? The principal is the person that runs the school. <laughs> oh, that's cool. That means you don't have anything to do with what I'm supposed to actually be doing. You deal with the." So just said, "You're not normal, so you don't count." <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's in a lot of ways. Uh, now you no, know what we go through. With so people. I think of of you. Especially, for example, and Issa and my kids and the way I was and from what I hear the way it was as kids. Um, and when I think through like really what my purpose is, it, it always comes back to those kids. Those kids who think outside the box, who want to know why am I supposed to respect you? Why am I supposed to listen to you? What have you done to deserve that? Do I just respect you out of blind whatever? Like what, what is that? So it's really to empower because even if Kids. I'm supposed to respect someone because of their position, that yeah. person should always be able to back up that position with a why. For sure. Yes. Or machete. Or, but that's a why. <laughs> that's a very, that's a very visceral why. <laughs> 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 yeah. I guess and, just that too. Like, what does respect mean? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It means, I do not think what it means what most people think it means, which is do what I say blindly <laughs> and Hey, so Show me deference and all of those things. And it's like, is you really just want people to make your life easy. That's not really respect. That's just people copying yeah. you. No, yeah, what so are my I, biggest what complaints? What is this one? As an Enneagram? As an Enneagram? Enneagram 6. Most of my decisions are driven by fear. Hmm. Um, that is actually so my Enneagram. dear friend, Heather, um, that, that said that. I so. Oh, yeah, that my mean? internet is crap. So. Enneagrams are awesome. It's another thing like... Colby or Strengths Finder okay. or whatever. But so the Enneagram six is the loyalist, the committed, secure oriented type, engaging, responsible, anxious, and suspicious. Um, so this, yes, that's her. <laughs> so, so this is this is a person that mm. is very comfortable working inside of a system where mm -hmm. the purpose and intent is set by the other authority, and yep. then that authority rewards with security so that you continue to provide loyalty. So this right. young lady taught me something. She was like, I love my job. I get to do the same thing over and over. Mm -hmm. Very, you know, it's very standard, very, very consistent. Yeah. And I almost fainted. I was like, oh my God, there is somebody like you? Like, yeah, there's, there's, a thing. <laughs> there's a lot. There's a lot of people. There's, there there, there's a lot of very effective people. But here is the thing. I didn't realize that at the time. So I thought people that have to do this repetitive work and whatever, That's they are true. suffering. And they're no, just like, no. no, she's like, I love it. And I thought, and, and wow. The, the other part of that how, is how beautiful the world has created that. If you're, not, like that if you're not that person, 
<laughs> Joking ever. And if if you're not that person and you do not understand that paradigm and the value of those people, you will actually never realize the the level that you're trying to achieve because you don't know how to instill that loyalty slash earn that loyalty from those people. So there's a lot of people that are like, I want to be a leader. And it's like, okay, that's great, but you do not understand what your followers actually need from you, so therefore you can never earn their respect. I have a question on that. Right. Do you think I want to be a leader is like saying I'm humble? Yeah. Is that kind of awkward? It's, it's, it's actually opposite. By, like, by declaring yourself to be a leader. Declaring you're, yourself to be almost anything. I've heard I about this shows class. You're not yeah. that. Like, was it a UT Austin or something that actually have a leadership class? Yeah, there's a whole... What, like, so, I'm sorry, a degree, I'm sorry. You just like take your money to tell you how good a leader teaching, you are, but... Teaching the methodology of how to <laughs> lead and drive something to completion is different than declaring yourself a leader of X. I agree, but don't you think that and if you signed up for a course, you want to walk out and say, hi, I'm a leader? No, 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 no. What they're teaching is... Well, if, I get what they're teaching. Yeah. I'm saying the people that go through it, what do you think they're... They I probably are, but if they, that's why they're going in, they're not going to be a leader no matter how many classes they take. Yes. Or they will learn all the methods. They'll put them in place, and people will say, okay, I will accept your leadership because I've seen these activities you've yeah. done. Yeah. Well, I get I get. So I'm thinking through the movie The Gla- uh, Gladiator, mm. right, where where Russell Crowe's character, I forget his name. Was it Maximus? Maximus. Yeah. Maximus. I should have named Issa that, for sure. <laughs> I have my friend named her son Maximus. He's totally like a Roman Max. gladiator. Cute. But I think I think through you know that that whole concept because some people are like I'm a leader I I am I'm going to be a leader, and I wonder how that works out. Like someone's like walking around saying, "I'm humble." Mm. I mean, I'm kind of humble, but <laughs> no. Sorry. I'm no, sorry. I'm no, sorry. The truth hurts you. No. <laughs> I don't think we're the ones that are going to be hurt when the truth <laughs> bombs start exploding. <laughs> I don't know. I was just thinking about that the other day. I think it's interesting. I think leadership yeah. is something that happens naturally. I'm amazing um, at being humble. Was that what you were thinking? I mean, that's what it can be. Whole <laughs> leadership I'm can be. Humble. Oh my gosh! Internet is ridiculous. Uh, yeah. Leadership can it's be. It's your computer. No, 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 no it's no, everyone. It's I accept mine. Yours is sucking all of the internet. Is what's happening. My, my so, so non Apple computers. Hey, I don't have hey, an Apple computer. Sorry, we're here. So leadership can be cultivated, but it can only be cultivated by doing. No, I, I get that. I'm just saying, like, walking in like I'm the leader well, yeah, 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 yeah. Is, is, is interesting. I mean, there's some people... So people say that, I'm a leader. Like, I don't know if that's... Is that something that you should say versus something that just happens? No, because if you say it, then all I the people the... that are subversively, like, rebellious will be like, I don't okay. trust you. Even so if I chose I... to follow you, I would absolutely... So I, I can see in some cases where people say, like, I'm the leader, right? It is if that claim stands up to the test. Right. But but I'm thinking through, for example, uh, another expression that's used often is thought leader. I think that's a title that's bestowed on somebody else and not something that you take on yourself. Yes. So I could say, mm-hmm. you know, Janica's a thought leader in, um, well, I don't know what, but anyways. <laughs> no, Janica's a thought leader in education reform or empowering children or children development or whatever. Right. right? I don't think you can walk around saying, I'm a thought leader in blank. No, you can't. So I saw this on Instagram that this lady said, no shit. It was like as meta as they get. I'm a thought leader for thought leaders who are, I'm like, what? Look, I actually have that screenshot somewhere because I was like, I can't believe I mean, it, that, that this is a thing that people are, are walking around and saying about themselves. But I mean, is it any different than the people that say, I'm a coach that coaches coaches? <laughs> no, I don't know. I think that's different. I think that's a legit different because you can say I'm a coach and people come and hire you, but you don't, I don't know. I, well, I think that's different. I mean, I consider a coach an occupation, not a trait. And I think leadership is more like a trait. Right. But then in the concept of like what the actual activity around thought leadership is, which is basically just like being obsessed about, enough about something to collect the top line zeitgeist and put it out to the public. If you are the person that is finding the interesting trend to then sell to the trend center, then technically you are a thought leader that encourages other thought leaders. You are a thought leader, but that doesn't mean that you call yourself a thought leader. I I mean, regardless, I'm just saying, like, it is possible to be it. I don't know if... There needs to be a study probably done that ranks those that are, based on their activity, Mm -hmm. versus those that claim it and what the delta would be. That's something that only you would think about and or do. He'll come, back, he'll come back with like, I have all my computers running all night and this is what they came up with. 
and this is how we can make money. I mean, there is a probably a model for this, but See? it would have, <laughs> have to be applied yeah. to other places. There's all these conditional statements on it. Anyway, so... Because also, it does it align with my purpose, and like, do I really care? That's true. But you don't know what your purpose is yet. My purpose is to play it's the to game. It's to chop down tree play branches. He's meant to be a freaking play the game. forestry. Whatever. So anybody Tech. else's purpose that we'd like to share here that we just know about? I mean, we talked about uh, Tangy's here. That's a, that's a company we're working with. Oh, well, we can talk about Linear Labs. Yeah. That's yeah. really awesome. Their purpose is amazing. So Linear Labs is a motor company based out of Fort Worth. Yep. They well, just, Granbury. No, they're saying Fort Worth now because that's where their headquarters okay. is at. So they Plus, have nobody knows where Granbury is. This is true. <laughs> Unless you drink a lot of Revolver. And then you know. And then you know. This is true. Yeah. true. So it's such a fascinating story. So if you haven't checked out LinearLabsInc.com, they, they have an amazing new motor design. And we went out and we, we got to work with um, Brad and his father, Fred, and created a video. Mm -hmm. And the whole story is looking at an old timey windmill that's like, I don't know, however 100 years old, yeah. 200 years old, whatever, whatever the, whatever the windmill design came up with. And looking at that going, how can we use that to provide power in, in villages that don't have that around the world? That was the whole purpose starting off with the company. And to create a self-drilling well. Well, I know it was all around. Yeah. Like, how can we use this to cause change? Right. Right. Come full circle, all of a sudden, like literally full circle, that they finally designed and designed a motor that is 100% a unique design and topology and motor, mm -hmm. and that is that has not been really, like really kind of motors have been the same. They've been proved because of the materials or whatever, but the motor itself has not. The motor designs have not changed in the last so many hundred years, 150 mm -hmm. years, whatever. And so all of a sudden, we have a completely new motor design that was all predicated on a design to use a windmill. And if it wasn't for the fact that they started to think about the windmill and the linear up and down motion of uh, the, the windmill, I don't know what it's called, shaft, they would not have stumbled upon this idea. And I think it's phenomenal, fascinating that their whole business is predicated on this purpose. Oh, it's a beautiful story. I mean, all of it. And then what they do from then, it's now designing motors that are, that'll make um, any kind of electric mobility, more efficient, more effective, mm -hmm. windmills, turbines, um, even even the implications in, in the robotics world, phenomenal because of the way they can actually control the motor and what it'll do in the surgical space. And I loved it. hearing that when he talked about the surgical space because it just was like all of a sudden eye-opening going, oh shit, like that is such a complex thing and not ever thinking that the house smooth that arm needs to be and and how right now how they're smooth but based on all these things that are yeah. compensating for the fact that the motor kind of creates all these problems versus right. this new motor that doesn't have these problems so yeah. it's really interesting but uh, but you know thinking through that whole purpose as where with the foundation of their business and I think it's really phenomenal it's really amazing mm -hmm. yep. so we are um, here at almost an hour so I think it's time oh, to sign up started like. 20 minutes late. Did we start 20 minutes late? Yeah, by the time all the internet started working. Yeah. Well, I'm going to thought leader this right, right on. Oh <laughs> Actually, I was going to say. I don't even know if that was a sentence. <laughs> okay, we're off. Uh, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, windmills and grain mills are apparently first used by the Persians in 8500. And the Chinese oh, in 8200. See, you had to fuel his, like. He said 100 years. Well, yeah, I know, but he's going to claim it since he's half Persian. Uh-huh. So I'm like 51% Persian or 51% Mexican, and so then I take full credit whenever I need to on any topic. So yes, my people invented the tacos and tortilla chips. Well, and my also people the invented the internet, so suck it. Huh? My people invented the internet. No, they did not. Uh-huh. Which people? Al Gore. <laughs> white people. Oh my white, god. White, white nerds. People. So anyways, uh, yes, windmills. Hey, you said 85 BC or something? 8,500. Uh, 500 to 900 AD mm -hmm. were Persians, and Chinese were 1,200 AD. Or What's up? <laughs> Geniuses we are. The first I mean, windmill manufactured in the United States was designed by Daniel Holliday in 1854 in Connecticut. I mean, Hammurabi did create the whole entire code of laws, you know, initially in that concept, so there's a lot that we owe the Persians. That's true. They also decided to conquer the world initially, you know, so. Yeah, but in a very unique and different way at the time. Yeah, by, by acquisition. No, 
Would yes, you? acquisition. <laughs> but hey, you can have your culture and you can keep your religion. Just pay. And they all yes. Yeah. <laughs> and then they also created uh, the first in like intercontinental road system. Yeah. And I would, mail system. That I, was the big one. I would say the Persian Empire was the first um, private equity firm. Yes. That's a very, <laughs> very, very good way to say it. And I can't wait till we do that with the United States. I was thinking like the lower performing 10 states we could sell off and then bring in another 10. So we keep the stars the same, but we bring in. So like right now, England might be on their way out, but it might be a good investment. So they come back in, flip it around, and then we'll sell off Louisiana. Or something. I don't know. Get back Again. to being cold. So sell, sell off so back to the French. <laughs> back to the French. Yeah, like we're done. No, I like Louisiana. Yeah. yeah. No, I'm just serious. Like, there are some states that just don't pull their weight economically. I mean, I'm not saying which one they are, but I mean, we can go look at it. Yeah. Top ten recipients of welfare. Oh, wow, I am just not a good enough capitalist to like. Oh, you're not performing. Goodbye. Goodbye. I'm you are can definitely. I do so, to so help a very interesting be study recently but, but that they went to a school. Are they performing or are they performing perform. exactly the role they're supposed to? Who in knows? The That's very to make other people look better. That's very well, yeah. <laughs> Because like every single system, like you need a bottom and you need a top. Like if those, if you don't have that, that yeah, I don't want that in my mutual you funds. Yeah, but you don't have a cycle. Yes, you actually do. <laughs> Tax know. loss harvesting. No, no, no. You need some underperforming stocks. No, I do not. I want to have all performing. What the okay, hell? so this is so off topic. But you guys, yeah. we didn't Sorry. answer where do you all fit on the wealth wheel for purpose? What would you score yourself, Abe, on purpose? Zero to ten. I think I always uh, score myself on that one like about eight, mm-hmm. nine. Yeah. I think, I think I think really honestly, um, anything in my life that is that I'm doing, if it's not aligned with my purpose, I actively look to seek to get it out of my life. Either um, not do it anymore or delegate it out or like why am I doing it becomes a really big question for like why am I doing this? And does it align? And that's what the whole And does it bring me happiness? Does it bring me joy? Like a lot of the other topics that we go through through our wealth wheel, like why am I doing this? Right. So I really don't do a lot of things that I do not like doing. So you would say an eight or nine? I would think so. Now, yeah. but aren't there some of those things that you need to do to fulfill the purpose? But if it's fulfilling my purpose, yes, absolutely. And sometimes I think, Stephen, if you're saying this, sometimes you might not n- know, and it might actually be against what you think would be for your purpose. But you have to experience to get. You have to go through it to get that experience to know and apply it to your purpose. Oh, so, well, that in, I was saying the concept of like doing activities based well, not based <laughs> solely, but like. The ones that like they don't bring you joy or they don't bring you happiness. Like some of those activities are necessary to fulfill the purpose. Yeah. Like, I hate taxes, but taxes yeah. aren't necessary to fulfill the purpose. That's true. But taxes you could delegate that out. For example, you can get a bookkeeper if you wanted to. Mm-hmm. You can get an accountant. You really just have to answer a few questions, and you can off you can delegate that out and free up that time for your purpose or the things that make you happy. Versus, I have to do this. I talk to. Everybody knows this gentleman. I'm not going to say his name. <clears throat> Brian Boyer. <laughs> uh, I called him up and he's like, I'm at Walmart. Like, why are you shopping? Why are you grocery shopping? You know? You charge $350 an hour. Well, I don't have any clients. Well, go home and go call some people. So we have a big, very pertinent question, which is what advice and resources would you give to help the huge number of people who are struggling to find their purpose? Ooh. Take it away, Emily. Just... If you're, if you are doing, I guess that's one. That, I don't know. For me, it's like purpose. I didn't find my purpose. My purpose just found me. So, mm-hmm. if you're looking so hard for something, you're not going to find it, because you are going to spend all of your time looking around, look searching, and not actually receiving. Beautiful. So, so I would add to that, um, finding the the goal, finding the purpose isn't the the end goal, right? but it is a result of specific activities. And so a lot of those activities around, they, they lie around experimentation and bringing new experiences in. Mm-hmm. So for people that are looking to find their purpose, but they're not actively participating in something that is slightly outside of the norm of what they do, it's gonna be really hard for them to find the purpose because they're staying inside of the paradigm that they're used to sitting in. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I mean, volunteer organizations, um, you know, just, 
volunteer organizations and finding stuff that you already enjoy slash you think are important in life and trying them out is probably the best that's the best use of time yeah i don't know if there's specific resources for finding purpose okay well okay i'd add to this that are not paid coaching oh yeah no i I don't think that's a way to find your purpose at all well not but maybe it might point some people in the right direction so like if you really have no idea of where to start with there's enough people that write things about purpose slash will make a video on the internet that may cost you 10 or 15 bucks that you could at least get an idea of where that direction might go. Even if you know like, no, that and that and that are definitely or not just my keep purpose. Well, and you start with the negative and then you'll get to the positive. Yeah. But I really do think it comes down to, and I don't know, I've, it's something I've, I've observed in so many children is that when you watch a child, a young child get locked into that flow mm-hmm. of they're just live in their life they are so happy they're creative like you can just see that energy radiating out of them when you look at them as adults invariably the happiest they are is when they are back to that same flow doing those same type of activities and for me i really believe that purpose is tied to that and if you don't feel that flow that connection that peace that where you just you know that you know that this is what you're supposed to be doing doesn't matter what people advise you to do oh you're really good at this this and this so you should be a nurse this is your purpose mm. they don't it doesn't matter if you can't get into that state of where the world just disappears and you're flowing and creating to, to solve that you're not there and it's it, it is that you can't find it you can't search for it it's just living and being and and really being aware of when you hit that state of, of yourself and knowing oh this is it and then how do I apply that to the world and taking it out there and trying different things along the way once you're there. I just kind of That's figured really out good. I was on that path. Like I didn't look for that path. Yeah. I was just on it and I was like, oh shit, hey, look where I'm going. Yay, I like this. Think that's how it should be. I totally think it's like the creation of the statue of David. Right? Like you whittle it out from something. You don't build it. No, exactly. You whittle it out by doing the things that you love to do and removing mm-hmm. the things you don't like to do. And I think um, for some people, the um, some people, when they start to realize, like, man, I really don't know what I'm doing. Let's say, let's say it a different way. It's a lot easier for some people when you're 17 or 18 and you don't have a lot of already established things in your life mm-hmm. to, to course correct. In mm-hmm. this case, for example, Scotty or Evan, right, or, mm-hmm. or Nor. They don't have a lot of outside responsibilities, so they could do a lot of different stuff. Um, as we get older, it becomes a little bit more difficult to have the time to go do the fun things and the things that we really like doing. But I would say that is, that's where you'll have to make those hard judgments and, and, and defend those activities that you really love to do and maybe whittle out some of your responsibilities or, or whatnot so you can continue to play around in those spaces. And if it brings you joy and happiness, I think that is really the road that you want to be on. So I'm yeah. really lucky that my purpose is along with a bunch of my like college friends so oh totally it's a 25 hour weekend worth of work but we're hanging out for 25 hours we're busting our asses and sweating our balls off and all of those things <laughs> but we're together and we're having fun and we're getting through the fun parts and the hard parts and the tired parts and the like injured parts and the sick parts and all the things and we're just like kicking ass and taking names and there's nothing <sighs> better than that yeah. really that's amazing yeah and when, when you get like the silly sleepies after the end of a really long event, we're all just like a little giggly and like, I'm just gonna stay at your house because I don't think I should drive home because I don't remember yeah. Yeah. anything. <laughs> yeah, so I got home so from driving home off the airport and I'm like, I'm home and I. So do the things you love. Yeah. Is that, is that a good summary? <sighs> Not even that love. It's or enjoy. what feels right. Do the things that it's you what right. resonates with helping. you yeah. inside. Yeah. That'll things, start putting you toward that direction. Do the things that resonate with you. I was absolutely getting covered in mosquito bites and sweat and rain and mud and dirt. That's not that much fun, but it is so worth that a sacrifice, if we can even call it that, for the end result of reaching that or working towards that purpose. Yeah. You say that, but I asked you a question the other day and you said no, and which was what if you could just spend time getting more money and then you could give and you're like, no, I want to give my time. Yeah, yeah well, because I don't have experience. No, so I'm not a, a different thing. Yeah, it's, 
Because hypothetically, the act of service, it's not yes. just let me throw some money at someone. Yeah. That's a very I totally important thing. That. In your case, it is the act of service. Yeah. In my case, I do not want to do the act of service. So therefore, yes, where can I write the check? So for me, it's more emp the empowerment of people like Emily would make me super excited. Oh, I don't even How know. How are you empowering me? Write me a check. No, I know you don't. <laughs> Yeah, I would feel more empowered if you just started just forking out. Yeah, because if I'm like, here, I'm here to help out, you're like, but why? Can you just go and get another client and give me that money? So I would so love I think about to that support often. you to come and volunteer. I just don't know that you would Fit. thrive in that environment. No, I wouldn't. I know that better than my, I know that about myself. Yeah. Uh, I think it make, I, I, but that's the beauty is I think it takes all the different types of people. And that's why we say for those individuals that have an ability to make a lot of money, that's amazing, but, but your ability to make a lot of money should, in my opinion, be coupled with these people like Emily and organizations like this that can take that money and cause massive impact instead of just buying material things. Yeah. Steven's wondering what that impact is on his watch. No, I'm just thinking. On his future watch purchases. No, no, no I, actually, I'm not even that. I'm thinking of the, the, the different ways of impact, and if, so like for instance, you know, we'll, we'll is the act of making money and then distributing that money the only metric we're using for impact? Or is there, mm -hmm. well, not, I mean, no, obviously, I'm just saying that obviously that is, we're not, I'm saying like in general, like right. the, the thought would be, are measuring impact only by the act, by what your money can go and do outside in the exterior world and its impact on other people? Or do we measure it by what systems are reinforced by your activity? So, for instance, Jeff Bezos probably has donated billions of dollars at this point because it's really, really good tax prep strategy, okay? Which has enabled a lot of people like Emily in some capacity, right? But then you could say that his activities by creating Amazon, which have been massively beneficial to us as the consumer, have been completely detrimental to our economy. Right. So then, like, at the end of the day, his impact is actually much more weighted towards the negative than is the positive, even though he distributed billions of dollars to people that have done good with it. Yeah, so let's say it a different way. We can not use Jeff Bezos. We can say, what if we conquered South America, enslaved all the people, took all of their resources, I became the richest man on earth, and then gave that money to poor and impoverished kids in America? The ones you stole their resources from or different ones? Different <laughs> ones. Okay. So that's not... I mean, not good. Do that yeah, in I would say like, that's not. Several times. Yeah. What? <laughs> Didn't we already kind of talk uh, about Yes, one hundred percent. America does that all over the place, which is why I'm a why I well, just take this freedom. Except for the giving, just giving to the it. Americans. Part. Yeah, we don't give it to the Americans. Yeah, no, no, no. no. But we we get we get the benefits of it as a country. We get cheap mm -hmm. oil. We get this, this. We get yes. And That's true. The other yeah. people suffer. Yeah. And categorically, fundamentally, which is why I I don't understand the discussion on the wall because we've ransacked so many countries south of the border in our policies and our whatever and our, the way the government has interacted with those. And we so now we're having to, <laughs> well, it's the truth. So some of these conversations need but that's to go not, deep. But that's not a conversation. As a half Mexican, I'm saying. That, like, that's also not a conversation because that's a conversation of economics and impact and geopolitical risk and the wall is not a conversation about that. I know, but it is just, it's just we're negative. acting like this is the first time we're being, we're, we're impacting the lives of people south of the Rio Grande, and it's, it's not like that. It's, it's, it's way deeper than that. Right. And we should, we should, we, we in some ways are the cause of some of those things, and we've enforced totally, those things. Totally. And I don't think a lot of people understand what we have done to right. those countries and enable those countries to have the dictators that they have or whatever, because right, they right. serve our economic interests. Right. So yes, I do not believe that money and creation for the sake of it is in and of itself amazing. I am saying, and that's up to you, and you know, I'm not judging anybody's wholesome, if they have a wholesome business or not, but right. if you have a wholesome business and you're creating good change in the economy and you're paying your employees well and blah, 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 and you happen to do really well and you make a lot of money, then maybe you don't want to just spend it on yachts and airplanes and watches. Maybe boats you can, and hose. Maybe you, boats <laughs> and hose. <laughs> maybe pairing up and partnering with organizations like Friends with Benefits um, is really some way that you can, you know, be part of the equation rather than, oh, why don't you all make money? Like, well, you're really good at that. You go do that. Emily's really good at facilitating these things, making things happen, actually sweating in the middle of the street and getting some stuff done. 
So work together. I think these. I think this is ultimately what I'm saying. I think we have to work together. And entrepreneurs are realizing that now in the United States, we are realizing that we need a change. I'm not. I'm, I'm using uh, Bridgewater Capital. What is Ray Dalio? Has oh, recently yeah. started talking about there has to be a change with the wealthiest Americans having to think back on what's going on in the country, or there's going to be a, an even bigger problem. And I think what these super, super ultra rich people are realizing is that if we don't get our stuff figured out, there will ultimately be a revolt. Guillotines still exist, bitches. A hundred percent. There'll be a revolt, French Revolution style, and these guys that are in the yachts will be just decapitated. I mean, Old that's, school style. That, that's been the whole thing about socialism. Socialism's biggest promoters are rich people. Yeah, I, yeah. Heard, I read, I really read it literally yeah. like Lenin got out of the Rolls Royce to say this to his comrades this well, morning, I read that. But also the flaunting of riches in front of poor people is what's gonna make them think socialism is a great idea. Absolutely. So Horrible. so, the, so we'll, we'll leave on this interesting note. Um, Let them eat kale. So there was a conversation around socialism recently at, uh, at the colleges in the United States and they said, what do you think about the redistribution of wealth between those individuals that have a lot of money and those individuals? And they were very, very, very much pro. And so they say, awesome. So what we also think we should happen is those with a high GPA should should be willing to shed some of the GPA points for those <laughs> of the lowest end of the GPA. And they're like, uh, fuck no. And actually, some of the people are like, well, considering what I just said about income, I think I should say yes here, but I don't want to. That's my GPA. It was right. really a fascinating because story. Your you whole, guys should your check whole it entire, out. Your whole entire mind should set, your whole th all your thoughts around that will shift as soon as you have it. Yeah. It's easy to proselytize about what people should do when you don't have any yeah, money. Yeah, so we came to the GPA shore and it was like, right? It's like, oh, this is something I actually... Oh, uh, no, yeah. no, no, I'm not so interested in sharing my GPA. Right. Um, but I, I do believe that there is, is it, there is, go back to what we talk about all the time, but like, it's the gray area. Like, we should not, it's not white or black. It's not all my money and it's not all not your money. Yeah. I think we should figure that out a little bit. The universal base income is a great, um, it's a great question. However, I don't think... Um, it's really hard to test that. I mean, we have unless it's done across a whole country. But, but I will say, but there are versions of it that exist that make sense in certain cases. Wait, I will actually say that I'm going to um, dovetail into a conversation actually today. We're going to do a becoming Da Vinci about Jack, Jack, Jock, Jock Fresco, Fresco, uh, and he's he designed uh, a, a project called the Venus Project out of and it's based in Venus, Florida. And he just recently passed away, I think two years ago, at like 101, 103, 103. years old. Yeah, yeah, we have the notes. We're going we're gonna, to gonna do that on our show today. And so what he did is he thought about a resource-based economy mm. where the resources of the world would be harvested for the betterment of everybody and get away from the monetary system. So I, I mean, think that's an interesting conversation. That it's we'll like what Alaska about. has in place. There's I don't know anything about Alaska. Alaska, Alaska. they pay you You can see dividend. Russia from it. Yeah. But, they pay you a dividend based on the resources that companies extract out of Alaska. So if you go drill oil in Alaska, there's a specific part of taxes that you pay for the, where well, you pay for the licenses to the state and then you pay taxes on that. And then the state takes a portion of it and they divide the rest of it across all the citizens. So that's like the way the Middle Eastern countries work. The Saudi, Saudi yeah, yeah, UAE yeah, yeah. and yeah. so forth. Yeah. So that is, that but is. But it's still a tax and it's still. It's a tax and transfer, but it basically says like you, you live in this state and you will have to deal with the consequences of the activity happening in it. So if there's going to be, re if there's right. going to be benefit created, then you should share that bit of information. Right. Uh, and th this concept I think is like, that's, that's like the only way that I think universal basic income will come around where it's like, okay, what are the pool of resources? Who's being able to realize value? Okay. We're going to mm -hmm. share some of that value with the people that are part of the chain because it's like, it's not based on you get it cause you exist. It's like, no, you get it because you are part of what is being created. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. It's interesting. I don't have. I'm not. I'm not necessarily saying that I'm a proponent of any of these things, but they're cool stuff for we'll talk for us to kind of talk about today. And it's really more around um, the com the topics of Leonardo da Vinci, those traits that he exhibited, mm -hmm. um, and it came out in this Venus Project. And it's a pretty famous, dude. The guy is fascinating. Fresco. I can't wait to talk about him. Yay! Yeah. Okay, we should totally end it there though because it's 11:30. Yeah, and I'm Try way late for a meeting. Oh, sorry. Well, thank you so much for everybody for tuning in. This was a, one of our most active uh, streams ever. We had a great conversation on both on Twitch and on Facebook. Camera. And uh, I would love for you to, to engage with us both on both these platforms. All of these videos are ultimately also showing up on YouTube. Our website address is thekineticexperience.com. Uh, please follow us uh, on any of those platforms that you're interested in. We have Instagram, we have YouTube, we have Facebook. 
our Becoming Da Vinci show is actually held and uh, hosted on YouTube, and we also push that to SoundCloud. Uh, yes? That's yes. It. All right. So I'm Aiden Nadim. I'm Janica Morton. I'm Lee Francis. I'm Stephen Ellis. Signing off. Bye.